All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. And uh, still Friday, yes, still thank God it's Friday. And I promise when I say we're going to be getting some very, very interesting conversations today on the show. And this, for me, I would say is one of the very, very important informations that you need to know about. Uh, because uh, we say a lot of people are, are into business, and this is the way to go about it. We're in a pandemic, and there's a lot of things that we need to put in place. Things have changed. What is the new normal? A lot of things have uh, moved from the way they used to be to a different uh, um, new way and we're going to be talking to someone who can give us insights in this kind of information and how to thrive in uh, a situation like this. I'm, just, I'm talking about uh, Chineye, F. Young, Chineye James F. Young. She's going to be talking to us on business. She's a business coach and uh, today the conversation is going to be centered around uh, uh, having multiple streams of income, still having a 9 to 5 and even not, uh, not having a 9 to 5. How can you um, balance all at the same time? Time. You're welcome to the show, uh, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All I'm right. very elated to be here. Beautiful, beautiful. So, um, how are you? We, it's, a, it's, a, it's a culture on the show to always ask genuinely. We know there's a pandemic, so we always ask this question. How are you, honestly? Oh, well, I think that's a very important question because... Um, the pandemic is something that came and took everybody unawares and it just hit every nooks and cranny of the entire globe. I can say truly that it's not something that hasn't affected everyone, including myself and different businesses, but I can also say that I'm doing quite well, um, adopting the safety measures and everything that's been put in place. I can say that this is a phase that we will pass and we are more hopeful than, um, than average. We are hopeful that this is a phase. And the important thing is that we're able to get the, the values that this has come to teach us and it will help us post COVID in making decisions, including business decisions. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. So uh, it's good to know that a lot of uh, we are human, and we probably have to come out and uh, you know and accept the new normal. Now speaking about uh, business coaching, for every regular uh, human being who just say hey, I want to get into business, let me just open a shop or start selling something or start you know that's always okay. the, 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 the 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 general mindset of running a business, and uh, for business coaching. How important is that to, you know, to making sure that you run a successful business? Because a lot of people don't even know it exists as business coaching. Why would I need a business coach if I can just, you know, see who is doing the business before, copy the person and move on? So how important is it to have a business coach? I think it's very, um, it's very, very important. If I have experienced that uh, people who are looking to start side businesses especially, uh, people who are looking to start even the traditional businesses get to understand these few things and that is why um, business coaching is important. They need to look beyond, um, understand and recognize the fact that starting a business goes beyond going out there to you know, get a traditional business started. There are risks inherent, so there are a few things they need to look at while going out there to get a side business when they have a nine to five, especially those who are employed, because very important is the fact that, um, you know, in the world that we live today, everyone who is employed especially needs to get a side business. And this is what I'm passionate about. And then for even people who have the one man business, they also need multiple streams of income. But then it goes beyond get to going out there to get a business. You need to understand, first of all, that you need to know the kind of tips that will help you thrive in that business. First of all, you allow me. Is it something that is evolution proof? Is it something that, especially now we're talking about COVID, we have gotten the value, the major lesson more than ever, that any business that doesn't have an online presence in the world that we live today is a closed business waiting to happen. And um, so, and the phone is a major tool as we, the phone as we know it is no more a phone, it's a business center. Yes. So you need to look into things that you can do remotely, that you can do um, with minimum physical presence, mm -hmm. that has an online presence. Technology has come to make life easier for us. 
-hmm. You also need to look at something that can give you more passive than active income and also a leveraged income and then something that has a low cost of entry. These are things to look around in the present day, especially for those who are looking to start a side business, who already have a tasking job, yeah. and those who have a primary business but are looking to get a, an additional income stream because that is a very important topic today, having multiple streams of income. Yeah, so uh, speaking about multiple so streams... Yeah. So speaking yeah. about multiple streams of income, um, you know, there, there's always been that saying of a uh, jack of all trade and master of none. And that has been some kind of argument that, you know, that people would just say, OK, stick to your nine to five if you're doing a nine to five so that you can be focused and you can, you know, make that uh, you, you can excel there or just stick to something else. So this has always been a conversation, a back and forth conversation. So uh, today we're, we're discussing how you can have a nine to five and still have a successful side hustle, like you, as, 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 as you, you put it, as you put it, having a successful side hustle or having other multiple, having multiple streams of income. In the present day situation, how do you think um, this can work successfully, seeing how a nine to five, let's start with someone who has a nine to five. Yeah, thank you. And um, this, I, I would say, is the, is the crux of the matter. First thing I want to say is that we must recognize the fact that the world has evolved, and we must evolve with the time. It was back then when we were growing up that our parents told us, go to school, get a job, um, make sure you pass your exams, then get a good job, work for 35 years, then retire and live forever happily after. That doesn't work anymore in the present day. All right? Yeah. That is to say that today our expenses are growing and our income, especially salaries, are fixed. So it is not possible for you to rely on your salary to be able to make ends meet in the world that we live today, in the present day economy. Mm -hmm. Because every day as we are evolving our expenses, we might need to maintain some kind of lifestyle. Back then when I was working in the bank, of course I worked in the bank for about 14 years, and it was 10 years into my banking career, I came to the realization that I was actually living a rat race. What I call a rat race is a situation where you are constantly running between your salary and your paycheck, back to your salary, back to your expenses, back to your paycheck, back to your expenses. It forms a virtual cycle. And sometimes you understand, you realize that before your salary comes, your, your salary is finished. Yes. And so this is why it's important for everyone to have something else bringing in income. But the problem is now what kind of business would you be able to do that can, that can give you, um, you know, that size, that extra income without having to be fully, like I said earlier, fully um, present physically. And in my case, in my experience, in that 10 years, I found a platform, all right? And that platform has these three key things that I talked about earlier. It gave me a passive income. I knew I could do it through my phone. And then I also knew that it was a leveraged income. So after I did my research into that industry for the MLM, I was able to get into it. And I started building it. And I could be at work and I'm able to look at my phone and look into my business. And on every week, four days of every week, I'm able to get what we call Green Thursday. That's extra income coming in for me. And I can tell you that in just two years, that income that came in from my side hustle became same as my salary, up at par with my salary. And then it exceeded it. Yeah. And through this window, I was able to acquire other sources of passive income. And that was what facilitated me my exit. I was able to work out an exit plan. And then I resigned last year from, from part time um, from employment, from my banking job. And yeah. I went to focus on my full time. But that wouldn't have happened if I was, if I did not um, start that business side by side. Because you see, the best time to start entrepreneurship is when you still have a job. Mm. You are able to try your hand on it. You are able to set your entrepreneurial model. You are able to take on some risks. And you're able to make mistakes and learn from the mistakes. But you still have the comfort of having um, a guaranteed monthly income. So it puts you on a level where you're relaxed. 
to build your side business. Mm -hmm. And then you can come to a point that you'll be able to make a decision whether to go full-time or continue to build this part-time. Mm -hmm. so, so as it is, speaking... Um, and um, this is what to me. Yeah, I, I'm getting what you're saying, which means uh, you, 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 you outrightly say that you should uh, still have your, your job uh, while you are starting up the side hustle. You must have a job. Absolutely. It's safer to have a, a steady that income. For those who have, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. For those who already have a job, they should start a side business, but they should also understand these key things in starting that side business so that they do not come to the point of conflict of interest with their job. Mm. So when you have something that you're able to do you know, flexibly without disrupting your job and still giving you good income, you can manage it side by side. It's going to be tasking, but we will teach you, we teach people how to manage it, and that's what I do in my business coaching, teach you how you can manage it side by side. And this goes beyond those who have jobs, I must say. Even those who already have businesses, but they need that additional income stream. You can also be doing something by the side that will give you leverage income. Hmm. All right? Yes. And then you can, you can have the streams of income coming in, yeah. So you, you said it's been a year now you left uh, your, the, 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 the banking sector and you've been uh, running business on your own. Now, I would like to ask, were you not um, um, scared taking that, that move, making that move, seeing the fact that, okay, you, 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 you want to leave that space of being, having a constant salary every month to being uh, running your own business and you know taking all the the, the 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 liabilities and everything on your own were you not afraid or were you not scared of making that move and so far it's been a year now how has it been for you running uh, uh, as an entrepreneur on your own thank you very much um i'll take that first question and you saw me smiling when you were asking that question mm -hmm. because it goes back to give me um, the memory of gratitude to the fact that this is one year after I took that bold step, that quantum leap to resign voluntarily from a job where many people are praying every day to get into. Mm -hmm. But then again, we understand um, there are reasons behind everything. And um, if, we, if we know some sectors with very low job security, and also very tasking. So when you ask yourself, why? What's my why? I, I was able to facilitate that decision because I was able to start and build a sustainable income while I still had a job. This was a major factor that was able to give me the cushion required to take that from me. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have something coming in consistently, I probably have still been there on the job because many people today have come to understand are doing jobs not because they have passion for it but because they are mandated to do it due to conditionalities they don't have an option yes some people are doing jobs that they hate i love passion i love i celebrate and i appreciate people who are doing jobs out of passion all right, there are a lot of people who are doing their banking career because they are passionate about it. Yes. But then there are a lot of people who are doing it out of compulsion. And for you to be able to come to that point where you are able to take, um, get to that point of self-discovery, am I doing this out of passion? Or can I go buy my time and enjoy time freedom? You must have options. Mm -hmm. And that is where multiple things are being from of income comes in. Okay. So um, on to that question, I would say that it was, it was emotional for me, but because, because this was a job I had done for close to 14 years, including my NYSC days. But, and, and that was the world I knew at the point. Hmm. So it was emotional for me. Yeah. But then I must say it was a smooth transition. Also, I learned a lot from the banking, which has helped me um, to be more professional on my side hustle. Yes. I was also very dedicated on my job, which has also helped me to be dedicated on my personal side, on my personal entrepreneurial full-time journey today. Okay. All right. Those were values that I got from having a job, which is good. 
Mm. But then I must say that it was a smooth transition because I discovered that platform that helped me build entrepreneurship part time. Okay. And then um, the second question: yeah. um, How yeah. has it been since this since past then. one year? Yes. I can say that it's just gratitude and it's been glory to glory. Mm. For one day, have I um, regretted taking that decision, but every day of my life, I'm thankful for the opportunity to um, be able to get to that point where I took that decision. Um, from then till now, a few things that I didn't know I could enjoy before when I had a tasking job, yeah. I enjoy them now. Yeah. Amazing. One, most importantly, time freedom, you know, being where you want to be part time, yeah. you know, being able to focus yeah. now to build my business, my team, and we are, um, you know, expanding and growing every day. And then financially, I've also been put ahead from where I was when I was, you know, in, in, my, in my paid job. Yeah. So all around, it's been amazing. It's been better than when I was, um, you know, when I had a job. But then I'm still grateful for the opportunity to do it part time. So, so um, seeing that you 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 juggle all this so well, you're a mother, you're a wife, you have uh, you're an entrepreneur, you have um, these businesses. How are you able to juggle all of them at the same time? <laughs> it, um, the thing about the human mind to answer that question is that it can expand beyond our imagination. If we recognize and teach our mind to recognize that you need to do this, and then it goes back to your why, you need to do something with a purpose. If you understand the purpose for which you are doing this, that's your why will drive you, and it will help you not even understand that you're stretching yourself. Mm -hmm. So how I juggled it, in fact, the truth is sometime after I left and I started doing this part-time, full-time, I mean, yes. I, I used to ask myself that question sometimes. How was I able to juggle all of this back then? But I can tell you that my why was what was driving me. What was my why? I needed to finally have time for my children, for my family. I needed to finally be able to do what I want to do I needed to be able to buy my time back. So I had to do one thing I would say as a tip for everybody who is watching and who is asking the same question, how can I balance it? You need to sit first of all and ask yourself, why am I doing this? When you've been able to come out and discover your why, then you need to go on and come and delist some things that are not important, that are not taking you to that point, to that your why. If you, if, when we, we all have 24 hours in a day, right? Yes. But, and that time is constant. But there are things we can do to manage the time. We yeah. cannot, you know, we cannot literally manage our time, but we can manage activities around our time. There are things we do that is not useful. There are times that we watch television. I had to put all that away. I had to put out some things that I did, like, you know, some unnecessary things. That didn't lead me to my dreams. Yeah. I delisted them and I was able to multitask also. That's the second thing. That is why the kind of business that I went into, the MLM, was very, very useful for me because it allowed me multitask. I like could be at my job. There's this 15 minutes gap you have sometimes to get a break or something. You still look into your business and you are doing something about that business. So multitasking came second. First was delisting things that were not important yeah. to manage yeah. my activities. And then, you know, prioritizing around, around your, you know, acting around your priorities. So if you have that consciousness, ultimately with your why in mind, you will be able to juggle all of this. And I was able to do that and still fuel this side business for over three and a half years, side by side my job. If I wanted to, I could have continued. But I knew it was time to go pursue my dreams, so I had to leave. Okay. Uh, and and uh, you, you said you were running uh, the, this business uh, alongside your, your, your regular job. How many businesses were you running alongside the, when you were still working in the, the banking sector? How many other businesses were you running on the side? Okay. I would say that it was this just one business that I ventured into when I was about 10 years in the business. But okay. I can say that that business was one in, it was like 101. Okay. Why do I say this? Because it gave me 
income that was not dependent on my own effort alone, called leveraged income. So my income was large enough, like I was running multiple businesses. Okay. But it was from this stream of income. And then I was able to then use this um, income that I got from this stream of income to get into other passive income streams. Mm. Like I was now having passive income from real estate, from, you know, um, paper investments, fixed income, and all of that. And those are also part of the multiple streams of income. Yeah. But primarily, the business that I teach people today was what helped me transit from where I was a formerly a salary dependent exec corporate executive to where today I am my own boss. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so uh, it's good that uh, we're having these conversations today because uh, a lot of Nigerians, a lot of them are confused. People say there are some business owners who don't know the next uh, uh, step to take. Seeing how the pandemic has caused a lot of uh, disruption in the natural order and the natural flow of things, uh, it's good that we're having this conversation. Okay, so let's talk about uh, multi-level marketing and what's, what it's all about. What's multi-level marketing all about? Thank you very much for finally coming to this. And I must, I must say that this was the turning point for me. And personally, I choose to see multi-level marketing as a vehicle, a vehicle to fulfilling any of your dreams. Mm. I must also say at this point, that a lot of people have misconceptions about that industry called the multi-level marketing. A lot of people misinterpret it for Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes, and those are illegal schemes. But multi-level marketing as an industry is just like every other profession, and it's just like every other model of marketing, but with a difference. The difference is that it allows, it's people, people are paid in multiple layers, all right, of activity, which is leverage. And then secondly, it allows you a very low cost of entry to enter into passive income stream and then you are able to get into other streams of income and that was exactly how it happened for me and then thirdly it will also you know help train you to 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 flex your entrepreneurial muscle it is the best kind of business for those who have the entrepreneurial bone inside of them but they do not want to go into taking on the massive risk of going into traditional businesses which yeah and um, statistics shows that, you know, um, most businesses fail in the first three years of operations, about 80%. But if you're able to get into, you know, the trainings and values you get from multi-level marketing, mm -hmm. you will be able to do any other kind of business and succeed in it because it gives you the entire training that you need. And I must, I must say at this point that this was the industry that helped me move and has changed my entire life today. And still continuing in it, I must say that right now I'm a full-time multi-level marketing professional, okay. helping several people to, to you know, build their own dreams, discover their why, and also gain financial freedom. All right, and I would, I would also would like to throw this in there. So we're still regarding the multi-level marketing. A lot of uh, uh, the, 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 the conversation uh, amongst Nigerians regarding this can be trust issues you know a lot of people feel that uh, these things sometimes they are not they can't be totally trusted you know it's it's been a conversation and that's one of the major concerns why people still don't see that uh, like, like you said you made examples of anytime you hear multi-level marketing they think of ponzi schemes they, they, they think of the pyramid and all that so how would you um uh, clearly uh, let people who are watching now know that this is something totally different and this is how uh it has this is what you did to get you to where you are right now Thank you. And this, I must say, is another very important um, point people need to understand. Um, yes, I do agree with you that a lot of people have misconceptions and have trust issues when it gets to multi-level marketing. And that is because they think it, it is what it is not. Um, multi-level marketing is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It is not a pyramid scheme. It's not a Ponzi scheme. All right. Multi-level marketing is not all of those. 
And you need to identify for you to be able to go into your question how you how I was able to you know use this industry to move you know and and succeed. You need to first understand that there are companies who are there to deceive people that they are multi-level marketing, but they are not. For you to understand and know good companies, you must look at the fact whether they have a product or a service that they are rendering. Because you need to ask yourself, where is the revenue coming from which from. they will be paying me? Where would it be coming from? Yeah. Some people just say, come and multiply your money. No, that is not multi-level marketing. There must be a product, there must be a service. And then the company must be able to have a good pedigree, a good history, and a good background. So you must look into the company. And this is part of the things I tell people in who want to use multi-level marketing to build their business. I train people and I show them things to record, to look out for when choosing a multi-level marketing company. I found one and it, it checked off on all of the options. Mm -hmm things to look out for. There must be a good entrepreneurial team. You must be joining a team that will support you to grow together. You must also um, look at the compensation plan. Sometimes they give you, um, you know, mind-blowing compensation plan that are, that are, you know, fluke. But when you get in, you see other things. So there are, those are four key things you need to look into. And these are things we teach people in business coaching. Look out for these things. And then, Join a good team. We help you to build you towards your own financial freedom. Because there is a saying that you do not need to reinvent the wheels. You can actually walk on waters if you are shown where the stones are laid. So in my business coaching, I have gone ahead to discover where the stones are laid. And that is why a lot of people in my team are succeeding. Because they can now just walk on the stones and achieve the same level of success. All right, this has been a very, very interesting uh, conversation. Thank you very much. And I believe that uh, for those who are watching, they probably learned a thing or two from uh, this conversation. Like I said earlier at the beginning of the interview, I, I, was, I made it clear that everyone needed to listen, to, to take down notes from here. And yes, I have learned uh, one or two things from this, knowing how to you know, manage uh, multiple streams of income and how uh, the process needs to go around. Thank you very much for your... Uh, for learning in your two cents in this uh, regard. Uh, as being a, a business coach, how can people reach out? Probably social media, how can they reach out to you? Knowing that, okay, now it's very necessary and they understand why we need business coaches to run a business. How can they reach you on social media? Thank you. So um, I have presence in most of the social media handles and I am available to take your questions, those who have questions after now, those who want to come and know more, um, these are my social media handles on Facebook, Chinaye James F. Young. And that's my name, Chinaye James hyphen F. Young. I take it again. Mm -hmm. And on IG, Chini F. Young, at Chini F. Young. And then on um, Twitter, Chinaye James F. Young. And then my website is www.chinifyong.com. www.chinifyong.com. Yeah. All right. All Do right. I need to drop my WhatsApp number also? No, no, no. It's fine. They can, they can just okay. hit you up on the social media platform. From there, they will be able to get all the information that's in the necessary, I believe so. Right. All right. Thank you very much for this conversation. It's been really, really, really insightful. And thank you for your time. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.